Hello everybody, this is Steve from 67 Music. We've traveled to beautiful Hawaii in search of Celtic music and culture here. Yes, there is Celtic music in Hawaii, thanks to the tireless efforts of the man we're about to meet. In fact, his efforts were rewarded in 2010 by the Hawaiian Caledonian Society, and he was awarded Scotsman of the Year. He's a bagpiper, he's a performer, he's an artist, a concert promoter, and he hosts his own weekly radio show. We're in beautiful Maui to meet Hamish Burgess. My name's Hamish Burgess. We're here in the beautiful island of Maui right now. We've got the West Maui Mountains behind us right here. And uh, I originally came here about 15 years ago as a scuba instructor. Uh, originally from Scotland, grew up in Cornwall, got into scuba diving and surfing. And uh, probably the surfing thing kept me here in the Hawaiian Islands. I started Maui Celtic uh, with my partner Jennifer Farney about 10 years ago. I just finished a scuba diving career and I uh, had nothing else to do and Celtic stuff is the only thing I really know so I started a retail company importing uh, Celtic jewellery mainly from Scotland, Ireland and Cornwall and uh, producing their own t-shirts and um, at local fairs and festivals and uh, this is one of the main logos right here, the brand new one and the new design has the Celtic Island, uh, the Hawaiian Islands as Celtic knots. I've been doing Celtic art for quite a long time but um, most recently uh, some great folks that took an interest in my artwork um, George Miller, a founding member, one of the founding members of the Irish Rovers uh, he comes to Maui quite a lot on vacation and uh, he came around the house one time and saw my Celtic art and since then I've actually been producing album covers for the Irish Rovers. Uh, the first one I did was Grey Seal Fair, um, then I did the current Christmas album, Merry Merry Time of Year, and the newest one is The Drunken Sailor. They had so many hits on their version of The Drunken Sailor, like six million on YouTube, that uh, they decided they'd better put it out on us and actually put it out on an album. And uh, so, and they're, they're very uh, generous in the fact they underwrite my radio program on uh, Manata Radio. And so, many thanks to them. So, they're actually helping promote everybody's Celtic music, as, as do you. <laughs> it's uh, the goddess Bridget or Brigid. Oh, yeah. Um, that was the cover of Celtic Connections newspaper up in Vancouver and Seattle. So yeah, I did the four seasons, starting with Samhain, which is now Halloween. And uh, it's kind of dark, and the old woman of winter is banging her stick on the ground. Emolk is the goddess Bridget's day, and uh, she was goddess of the hearth, and also goddess of healing. And uh, her animal um, is the serpent, which you still see on the healing staff today. Most people kind of say that's Greek, but there has to be a connection there as well if she's the goddess of, of healing. You have Beltane, uh, kind of May Day festival, uh, dedicated to the sun god Bell, and uh, they used to drive cattle between the Bell fires to kind of purify them before they took them up to the summer pastures. Um, and the really ancient thing that seems to have been lost to an entire race of people, the Beal, Bealia pole, the Bealia tree. Um, is an ancient mythological tree in Ireland which is kind of gone from most mythology um, the only remnant left of that is the maypole which is still done in, in a few countries they even do it here they have a maypole dance the major festival of the year is Lunasa dedicated to the sun god Lu and uh, it's a harvest festival um, and there's corn dollies they believe that it, you know, when they cut the corn the spirit was in it still so they would uh, rather than let it die they would put a corn dolly up on the mantelpiece or whatever and keep it till the following year and sow it back into the ground so that the spirit continued. Well, this is my but, uh, interpretation of St Patrick, I did him a little bit different to most people, most people portray him with a big mitred bishop's hat. There's no way a monk converting the pagan Irish was wandering around 5th century Ireland <laughs> in, a, in a bishop hat. Um, so there was a lot of references to him as uh, some druids were giving him a hard time saying here comes Ad's head 
and um, I took that as to mean the old clerical tonsure from the Middle Ages where they had a little tuft at the front. Uh, that's just my interpretation. And um, so yeah, there's a few. Uh, I did play on the image of, uh, they say he drove the snakes out of Ireland, which is purely a reference to paganism. But he did supposedly encounter two uh, dragon-like creatures that he cast down. So I put those guys in there as well. They the Coronach and the Aurelie of, of Feist are the name of the two creatures. So this is a piece called Maui Celtic Ocean and uh, it's all Hawaiian marine life done in a Celtic style. I spent many years as a scuba instructor and uh, I decided to capture some Hawaiian marine life but my only style really is Celtic so I, I did a bit of modern Celtic art here and uh, everything even the turtle and the jellyfish and the manta, everything is Celtic knots in it. So I started bagpiping maybe, uh, I don't know, 15 years ago. I didn't actually learn any of that until I came to the Hawaiian Islands. And uh, I learned from a, a fellow over in Honolulu originally, because I lived over there, um, called Craig McDonald. And uh, he left, went to Texas, I left and went to Maui. And I was left on my own, unfortunately, which is never a great thing for bagpiping. But uh, then I hooked up with a few, uh, one local fella um, that was uh, originally from Portland and uh, California, but he was living in Maui. And we found a couple other gentlemen up on the mountain, um, up in Kula, and the five of us formed the nucleus of what was to be a pipe band called the Maui Celtic Pipes and Drums. And uh, I was in that for about 10 years until uh, my life got too busy for me to, to be involved in that and uh, the band's still going but under a different name. Uh, the band's now called the Isle of Maui Pipe Band. But uh, there is quite a nice book written by a friend of mine over on Oahu uh, called Hardy Spore. He's one of the pipers over there and uh, he's written a history of bagpiping in Hawaii which is quite specialised. <laughs> and uh, there's been pipers here for quite a long time. They used to be visiting on ships and, and play for the Hawaiian royalty. And uh, this book is uh, called Opoho Ukanui o Keiko Kia. The last crown princess of Hawaii was uh, Princess Kaiulani. Uh, Cleghorn was her second name. Her dad was a businessman who came via New Zealand from Edinburgh in Scotland. And uh, he married Princess Miriam Lika Lika in the in the royal family of Hawaii, and um, so their their only heir was a daughter, Princess Victoria Kaiulani Cleghorn. Uh, the Cleghorn family still have descendants, although she didn't have any uh, known descendants. The <laughs> sisters still have descendants on Oahu and on Maui, so uh, that's our big Hawaiian Scottish connection right here. That, uh, the last princess of Hawaii was actually half Scottish. Uh, she did spend some time, in, mainly in England, getting uh, some education over there in England that was supposedly fit for a queen. And uh, But she also visited Scotland and Ireland while she was over there. This is in fact the Hawaii State Tartan. It's registered in Scotland as the Hawaii Tartan. And, um, it was created by Douglas Herring, uh, probably about eight or nine years ago now, in a competition by the Caledonian Society of Honolulu. Uh, Doug Herring now lives on the Big Island, Hawaii. And um, he won the contest to create a Hawaii tartan, and he picked the colors as blue for the ocean and the sky, green for the foliage, red-brown stripe in here was for the dirt color that we have, and uh, red and yellow was for the fire and lava that created the islands, but also in honour of the elite, the royalty. So that's the uh, colours in the Hawaii Tartan. Um, I didn't invent this, it was Doug Herring, but I was, uh, I guess, instrumental in getting it into public. Um, the, the state legislator just um, didn't really have time to deal with it, so I asked Doug Herring what he wanted to see happen to this, and he just wanted people to be out in public wearing it. And uh, I took it to uh, a kilt maker who used to come to our Highland Games in uh, Honolulu every year, um, the Celtic Craft Centre in Edinburgh in Scotland. 
and I said what would it take to make a cotton swatch from his mum's home loom into a bunch of kilts and he said they said give us the swatch to take home with us uh, give us three orders of kilts and about nine months and uh, a year later this plus Doug Herrings and a Piper in Honolulu were the first three Hawaii Titan kilts ever produced. I was actually very honoured uh, a couple of years ago in 2010 um, by our local Scottish community, the Caledonian Society of Hawaii uh, awarded me Scott of the Year. Um, a lot of worthy people have had that over the years and, and I was very privileged to be included in that. and. Um, I guess it was for a lot of work within the Scottish community just promoting Celtic culture, especially Scottish culture, and they were very much aware of the, the radio program that I have, and um, yeah, I, I guess that's why they gave it to me. <laughs> the Maui Celtic Radio Show is on uh, non-profit Manata Radio, uh, listener supported, and we started about maybe eight, nine years ago, uh, another fellow called Tony started it and uh, he invited me to come down when he heard that I was playing, I was jumping in on any other DJ's show just to play Celtic music and he heard about that, invited me down and um, it was on his program Sunday Solstice a few years ago, maybe six years ago now, uh, he handed it over to me and it became the Maori Celtic show and uh, it's been going strong for six years with lots of internet listeners all around the world now. You can learn more about Hamish Burgess and his company Maui Celtic at his website, MauiCeltic.com. There you can view more pieces of his original art, and he's got a great events calendar should you travel to the islands and seek out Celtic music. Also, in regards to his radio show, look at ManauRadio.com, and you'll learn about all the music and all the events that are going on every Sunday here on the island. It streams on the internet around the world too, so check it out. From 67 Music, this is Steve. Mahalo for watching. Aloha.